All right. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, I want to start off by thanking the uh, athletic uh, administration for their uh, help and support uh, putting together this uh, this fine uh, recruiting class. I also want to thank uh, uh, the former uh, coaches, uh, Coach Cabral, Coach Jackson, Coach Parrish, Coach Archie, uh, for their efforts. Especially want to thank uh, Coach Jaden Everett. Everett uh, for what he did and his efforts, uh, did a tremendous job of uh, keeping everything together and, uh, and really was the heart and soul of uh, leading this and uh, keeping everybody together. So I want to I wanna make sure that we recognize Coach Everett and his efforts. Uh, I want to talk about these uh, 24 young men, uh, but before I do that, uh, I want to talk about uh, uh, the people that were involved and thank them. Uh, when you when you pick a university, number one, you gotta pick a university where you're gonna be academically successful. And I want to thank the people, uh, the faculty, the professors, our academic support uh, for helping in the recruitment of these young men. Uh, I want to thank. Uh, next thing you look at when you're uh, picking a university is you want to pick a university where you're gonna be athletically successful. And I want to thank the people that were going to be involved in these young men's life. I want to thank our strength staff, our training staff, and our coaches for uh, uh, showing these young men that uh, uh, how successful they can be on the football field. And then lastly, I want to thank our, uh, our football team uh, because they're our greatest ambassadors. Uh, they took the time. It was important to them uh, to bring these young men in, uh, to show them a great time. And, uh, and obviously show how they can be uh, socially successful and how meaningful not only a degree playing here, uh, but the camaraderie that we have amongst our football team. Uh, I'm excited about this class. Uh, it's a class that uh, has 24 commitments. Uh, we had 21 high school signees, uh, two FBS transfers, and one uh, junior college transfer. Uh, putting this together, we, uh, we got nine from the state of Indiana, uh, four from uh, Florida, two from Colorado, two from Illinois, two from Kentucky, one from North Carolina, one from Ohio, one from Tennessee, one from Virginia, and one from Wisconsin. Um, but again, uh, the thing that we put together here, these are young men with high character. As you're going to see, they come from, a lot of them come from great football programs, uh, winning programs, tradition. Uh, a lot of these young men were captains of their football team. Uh, they, of course, they have uh, uh, great accolades, but more importantly, they, uh, they're coming with high uh, character. Uh, you're going to see it, uh, some of them are academically successful and have some academic honors as well as athletic honors. Uh, as we go through down the line, uh, a couple things here I want to start off by saying. Uh, in, re in putting together this recruiting class, uh, we're always going to start off in the Wabash Valley. Uh, we've already uh, uh, made a push uh, today for the 2018 class, um, and then everything from outside the state. And so it'll always start here in, in Wabash Valley, in the state of Indiana, and then the surrounding states. Uh, the first young man I, uh, I want to talk about is Henrik Barnt. Henrik Barnt. Uh, Henrik comes from Ralston Valley, 
uh, fine football program. He was all state. He was all conference his senior season. Uh, he's got had 146 tackles, 12 sacks. Uh, the thing that we really liked about uh, Henrik was his length. Uh, he can play defensive end. He can play on the outside. And he's got a huge frame to get big at 6'5", 250 pounds. Uh, the next young man is an in-state uh, player from Brownsburg High School. Brownsburg is a, uh, you know, a very, very fine football program here in our state. Uh, this young man's name is Treshawn Britt, uh, 6'5", 300 pounds, offensive lineman, was an in, is on the Indiana All-Star team, uh, played basketball. He's a left tackle, uh, comes from a great program. What we liked about him was his flexibility to play up and down the line. The next young man is Jackson Byrne. Jackson Byrne is an offensive lineman, 6'4", 270 pounds. Another in-state player from West Washington High School in New Albany, Indiana. Uh, he was a two-time uh, IFCA All-State player, AP All-State player. Uh, we liked his size, we liked his strength, and we liked the ability, his ability to push people around. The next young man is Khalif. Copeland, a defensive back, 5'10", 177 pounds, from Willowbrook High School in Villa Park, Illinois. He was first team all-conference. He was academic all-conference, academic all-state. Uh, had career tackle of 246 tackles, 11 interceptions, 23 pass breakups, and three forced fumbles. The thing that really stands up about Khalif is his physicalness. Uh, moves like a defensive back. And plays like a line and hits like a linebacker. So we really are excited about Khalif. Uh, again, I talked about the importance of the Wabash Valley. Uh, we have a young man uh, by the name of Ethan Cox uh, from Terre Haute South here in Terre Haute, Indiana. He's 6'4, 215 pound linebacker. Uh, he's a first team all conference, first team uh, Wabash Valley conference player. Uh, holds the career record of tackles at Terre Haute South, uh, which is a heck of an honor, with 375 total tackles. Also was a team captain of his football team, was academic All-State. Uh, the thing that we really, really stood out about Ethan uh, was that his ability to play all three positions at the linebacker. Uh, the next young man uh, is Kyle Erickson. He's an offensive lineman, 6'4", 295 pounds. Uh, he's from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Actually came to us from East Carolina. Uh, played at East Carolina. Uh, redshirted in 2014. Played in uh, 11 of 12 games in 2015. And played in six games out of 12 in 2016. Uh, Kyle's already with, with us, has joined us in uh, January. Uh, what we like about him is his ability to raise the competition, and all these guys that we bring in are going to raise the raise the bar and uh, and compete, uh, and it's going to raise the level of the competition, which we're excited uh, to get these young men. Uh, the next young man man is uh, Fred Reek, uh, Fabricius. Uh, he's an offensive line, uh, 6'6", 305 pounds. Uh, he's from Laporte, Indiana, from La Lamere High School. He's got great size. He's got great strength. He's got good feet. Uh, again, he's going to raise the bar uh, and, and, uh, and bring the level of competition. And he's already on, uh, on campus and working out, and we're excited about him. Uh, the next young man is uh, Ricky, uh, Ricky G uh, Gibson, excuse me, offensive line. He's 6'3", 290 pounds. Uh, another great program, Baron Collier High School in Naples, Florida. Uh, he's first team. Uh, all district, first team, all conference, first team, all all area. Uh, had 40 uh, uh, pancakes the senior year, and the thing that really stood out for him is his great power on a power back, to, power run team. So when we're looking to run the football, we saw how he's pushing people all the way, and that really stood out when we watched Ricky. Next young man is Dante Hendricks. Wide receiver, 6'2", 175 pounds, uh, from Randall Cooper High School in Florence, Kentucky. Uh, was Kentucky 6A Player of the Year. 
Uh, Cincinnati, Kentucky Inquirer Player of the Year. Uh, played both wide receiver and defensive back. Had 171 receptions. 17th all-time in Kentucky history. 3,107 yards. Northern Kentucky record. Had 40 touchdowns. Eighth in the state. Played both uh, wide receiver and defensive back. Uh, his senior season, he had 17 receptions, for, had 20 touchdowns, and on defense, he had 30 tackles. Uh, what really stood out about Dante is his length uh, as a wide receiver. He can stretch the field, and he has great ball skills. Corey Hicks uh, is a young man that joined us from Monroe College. Uh, he has joined the uh, program already. Uh, he's already uh, in there competing. Got a chance to watch him move around. Uh, really like his skill level and his ability to uh, be a cover corner, so we're excited about Corey. Uh, the next young man is uh, uh, Mariel Jennings, uh, wide receiver, 6'3", 185 pounds, from Fork Union Military or Prep School in Richmond, Virginia. He was all-conference, all-region, and the thing that we really liked about him was his, his ability to be a vertical threat. He's got great length, great speed, and he'll also increase the competition at our wide receiver position. Uh, the next young man is Peterson Kurgelin, uh, from uh, running back 5'9", 180, uh, from uh, Concordia Lutheran High School, another really uh, fine program in our state from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, he holds a career scoring record at Concordia, also holds a single season record for kickoff returns, uh, ended his career with 3,987 yards. Uh, you know, was part of a 3A state championship team. So again, a guy that's come from a great program uh, that won the state championship this year. The thing that really stood out for him was he's a he's a young man that runs and plays like a big back. Uh, he's got the sp speed and the agility of a smaller back, uh, but he's really a physical guy. Uh, he's got great hands. Uh, he's a great returner, and he brings us a lot of versatility in the backfield. The next young man is Stephon Mays, uh, outside linebacker, 6'1", 241 pounds. Again, uh, from a, uh, a fine, fine program in Louisville, Kentucky at Mayo High School. Uh, was a team captain. Uh, was elected team MVP by his peers at the end of the season. 85 tackles, 10 sacks. Again, another guy that is long, athletic, he's got a big body, uh, and really fits in a lot of the positions defensively. So we're excited about Stefan. Next young man is Titus McCoy, running back 5'10", 187 pounds from Greenwood, Indiana at Center Grove High School. Again, uh, a great football program in our state. So we're excited about Titus. Uh, he's a four-year starter. Uh, and a four-year starter at a place anywhere is impressive at Center Grove with the tradition they have is, is obviously speaks volumes. Uh, he's a first-team All-State, first-team All-Conference, two-time two state finalist at Center Grove, uh, played in the Blue-Gray All-American team, uh, rushed for 3,828 yards, 645 yards receiving, and had 54 touchdowns in his career. Uh, the thing you see from him, power back from a power program, and we're excited to have him. Ron Trez Morgan, wide receiver, 5'11", 165 pounds. Uh, again, another young man from uh, a great program in Oak Leaf High School in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, was honorable mention All-State, ended his career with 103 receptions and 20 touchdowns. Again, another young man, athletic, uh, can return, and uh, it's coming from uh, one of the top programs in Jacksonville, Florida. Max Morgan Elliott, uh, offensive lineman, 6'3", 270 pounds from Wayne High School. Again, another uh, uh, great program in the state of Ohio, in Huber Heights, Ohio. He was first team all-conference, uh, powerful uh, blocker. He's got athleticism. Uh, another young man that can play up and down the line, offensive line, and we're excited about Max. Rayshon Mosley uh, has come to us from Northern Illinois, 
Northern Illinois is known for uh, a physical uh, front, and uh, he fits what we're going to do here at Indiana State. Played in eight games. Uh, had six, uh, I'm sorry, played in eight games in 2015. Uh, played in 12 games as a true freshman. Uh, he's already in the program working out, and uh, Rex is what he goes by, and Rex is uh, uh, gonna again going to bring his competition at the defensive line. Uh, next young man is uh, Cade Parat, tight end, 6'3", 225 pounds. Another young man from Ralston Valley in Arvada, Colorado. Uh, again, a great program in Colorado. Was first team all-conference, uh, was all-state, uh, and it was elected team captain by his peers. Uh, versatile tight end, gives us a lot of flexibility and what we want to do with our tight end position is got great ball skills. Next young man is Jay Paris. Uh, Jay is an uh, offensive lineman, 6'4", 302 pounds, uh, from Nina, Wisconsin. Uh, unanimous first team all-conference player picked by the coaches in the conference. It was all area. Uh, you know, a typical big uh, offensive lineman. Our offensive line coach loves them because they're both from the same state, obviously, so they got a lot in common. True left tackle. He's got great athleticism. And we're really excited about Jay. Uh, the next young man, uh, Chris Reed. Uh, right now, he's an outside linebacker. Could possibly be a defensive end. Uh, he's got that versatility. He's 6'2", 205 pounds. He's from St. Joseph High School in Bellwood, uh, Illinois. He was a four-time uh, defensive MVP on his high school. Four times, four-year starter, two-time All-Conference. Uh, was the conference MVP, was all, all state, had 221 tackles in the career, had 52 ta tackles for loss, had 27 sacks in his career. Uh, in one game, uh, he had more stats than some guys have in a career. Uh, in one, one game, he had 21 tackles, blocked field goal, and six and a half sacks. So uh, he's obviously got tremendous talent. Great ability to get to the quarterback, so we're excited about Chris. Next young man is a, uh, another in-state player uh, from a great program in Bloomington at Bloomington South. Uh, Three-time All-State player, All-Conference, All-Area. Uh, he was the Herald Times uh, Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, had a uh, career total of 451 tackles, six sacks, five interceptions. Thing you like about Tommy uh, is his leadership. Uh, uh, he was elected captain, uh, and he can play all three linebacker positions. Uh, the next young man is Gene Sinan. Uh, his senior season had uh, is uh, three, 35 tackles, three interceptions, nine PBUs, and a defensive uh, uh, touchdown. Cover corner, uh, great speed. Uh, also ran track, three-time state qualifier in the state of four, uh, Florida, in the four by one, in the four by four. Uh, he's got great, great numbers, and he's, uh, he's got uh, a lot of speed, and we're excited about him. Next young man is Demarcus Trotter, defensive back, 5'10", 175 pounds, all city, all region, all state, multiple uh, time player of the week. 83 tackles, four interceptions. Uh, he comes from Nashville, you know, very well known area for great players, great football, in an area that we're going to expand as we recruit outside the state of Indiana. Next young man, Tynan Williams. Again, another young man from in-state. Uh, tight end, 6'3", 225 pounds from uh, New Prairie High School in LaPorte, Indiana. Uh, was two-time All-State, two-time first-team first All-Conference, and again, elected by his peers as his team captain. Had 22 receptions his senior year for 326 yards. The thing you really notice about Tynan is his ability to block. He's a physical blocker and his ability to move him around. But he's a tough, physical guy that uh, we're really excited about. And that's our 24-member uh, class. Again, uh, really excited about these young men and uh, what they bring to our football program. The dynamic of becoming a new coach in the middle of the recruiting period, 
How did you incorporate the guys who are already on board and incorporate some of your own guys that, that you wanted? You know, uh, again, uh, you know, started with uh, the previous staff and how they, they started to put together a class. And then Jaden Everett, uh, I can't say enough about his efforts and how he kept the class together. And uh, Jaden, obviously, is going to be our running back coach. And uh, he did a tremendous job. And then what, what happened there was uh, we had a core of guys. We still had to fill probably half the class from there. Uh, the guys that were committed stayed committed for the most part. And uh, they did a great job of, of staying together, of staying connected, building relationships, rela uh, uh, keeping that bond. And then uh, with that being said, you know, our players did a great job. These guys that were committed kept coming in, up to uh, be around and uh, build relationships and get to know some of our players. And then as we had something to work off of, uh, we hit the ground running. And uh, we knew where we wanted to start. We wanted to start in the state of uh, Indiana. And uh, that's where we hit. We went to Bloomington South, got Tommy Richardson. We went to Brownsburg, got Treshawn. And, uh, and we just kept moving. And uh, we knew where we wanted to go, the, the needs we needed to hit. And, uh, and we're, we're not done. We're, we're still hitting it. We, we're going to keep recruiting. And, uh, but we're pleased with the guys that are, that are jumped on board. <clears throat> when you're talking about the, go ahead, the character of the guys mm -hmm. that you have <clears throat> on the field, what do you think these tr 24 guys could bring? Athleticism, speed, what do you think they could bring to Sycamore football? They want to be here. You know, that was the thing. They came here, um, and you could see that they just fit in. And, uh, you know, when we got when we hit the, the the ground running, you know, we we started with people we know. I started with friends in this in the state. Uh, I started with people I consider family, and we went from there. And these guys that we uh, got to know, there's some of them I had known previously. You know, maybe I was at a, at, at the University of Wyoming, and uh, we had two young men from Colorado, so I knew about them. Uh, I recruited uh, Chicago. I recruited the state of Illinois, so I knew some of those guys. And so it helped uh, having a background with these guys and knowing what type of young men they were. And uh, Chris Reed was a young man, too, that I had a background with and had been recruiting a long time. He's just one example. But uh, putting it all together, uh, again, these are guys that uh, represent not only our university but their families, and they all joined them when they came here uh, on their visit. When you looked at the current roster and you evaluated what you needed, what – the recruiting class to that point had had dealt with. What were your evaluations, and what's kind of your been your general evaluation of of the existing players that are still here, and, and how does this how does this class kind of fit into what you want to see? You know, I uh, when I first got hired, first thing I did was meet with each guy individually, just to get to know them. And uh, I've been to three workouts in the mornings, and I've been in the weight room Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, uh, last week I was in there twice. I take that back. Monday and Wednesday and Friday or Wednesday and Friday and then today. So I, I've liked their, their effort and how they're coming about business. Uh, we're not anywhere close to where we need to be, um, but I have seen improvement. Um, you know, I've seen a want to. I've seen guys coming into the uh, office hungry, wanting to know who we're hiring, um, when they can start meeting. Um, but there's an eagerness, uh, an eagerness to get started, uh, an eagerness to have everybody together. And that's been probably the most impressive thing is just the want to. And, uh, and I just see improvement uh, each and every workout. And I know when we get everybody here and we've we're, uh, we got the full team together, uh, we're going to hit this thing and we're going to hit it hard. Coach, recruiting is a part of your past being a coach. And uh, it's only been about a week and a half since it's been official. But how excited were you to personally go out and recruit some of these guys to be part of your first recruiting class, your first head coaching gig? And et cetera, to get in there and meet them face to face. You know, I I love recruiting. Uh, I love coaching, but recruiting is one of the things that I love to do. Um, I love to get in and meet the families, get to know them, build relationships. Um, but it was exciting. You know, it was exciting to go in uh, to some uh, to some of these young men's homes uh, as a head coach rather than a defensive coordinator or a position coach. So that that part of it was really fun. Um, you know, I really enjoyed uh, getting around. Uh, I, did, I, you know, I didn't get much sleep, but I wasn't tired. I guess I was just uh, uh, running on adrenaline. And, uh, but, uh, 
really had a lot of fun. Uh, I didn't need a map for the most part getting around the state. And, uh, and it wasn't the first time I've been in a lot of these high schools. Uh, so uh, I really enjoyed this week. And, uh, you know, it was real grat uh, <clears throat> excuse me, gratifying to see all these guys come together today. You have seven offensive linemen in this class. Uh, talk about that, and that, that's the most dominant of the of the positions that you have. Mm -hmm. And what do you see? Uh, obviously, you, you described what you saw to the guys you're getting, but how do they fit into what, what you have? You know, uh, you know, it, it's a position that we need to build on uh, numbers wise. Uh, you'd like to have 16 on scholarship. Uh, we're at 15 now, and so we're we're probably one short where we need where we'd like to be. Um, but you got to have depth. It's always going to start up front. Uh, we want to be able to run the football. It's always going to start about running the football. So when we're looking at some of these offensive linemen, I uh, want to see how well they can move people. And uh, you're going to see these guys are big, they're physical, and, uh, and the guys that can push people out of the way so we can run the football. We've got a good backfield. Uh, we've got a, a group of young men at running back that we feel that can run the football. We're going to get some guys that can get in there and compete and, uh, and push some people around. Yeah, it's something I probably haven't asked you much about in terms of your philosophy, mm -hmm. in terms of how you have X's and O's. Um, you alluded to it a little bit there, but, but talk about your offensive philosophy and sure. also defensively, is it 4-3, four, 3-4, three, three, four, and mm -hmm. how do these guys fit into what you want to, what scheme-wise you want to do defensively? Off I'll start offensively. Uh, offensively, we're always going to start by running the football. Uh, we're going to have the ability to uh, be in personnel groupings, maybe be in two tight ends, one back, and be multiple formations. Uh, it's always going to come out of the power run game. Uh, we're going to have the ability to shift in motion on every play and have some vertical play action pass off of that. Um, but uh, it'll always start with the run. Um, and so I'm excited about the offensive staff that we're putting together. Uh, I know it hadn't put, uh, been announced, but uh, uh, as excited as I am to be here, I'm as excited about the staff that we're putting together. Uh, defensively, we're gonna. My background's always been a four-man front, four-three. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna coach the football team. I'm gonna be on both sides of the ball equally, involved in special teams. Uh, I'm hiring coordinators to coordinate. Uh, I wanted to have. I knew what I wanted to do offensively. I knew what I wanted to do defensively. And defensively, we're gonna be a four-three team. Uh, we're going to have the ability to pressure, obviously, out of man concepts and zone pressures. Uh, but uh, excited about uh, getting both staffs together and hopefully have uh, all of them in place by the end of the week. That it? All right. Thanks, Coach. Sure. Go. Thanks, Coach.